beyond your relationship and you cannot go further than your level of association per time. You can only succeed according to the kind of people you relate with. You will also fail, struggle, and be stagnated due to the kind of people you are relating with. So the kind of relationship you have per time defines, determines what your accomplishment, achievement per time. The circle of relationship is the defining factor in the school of greatness. Wealthy people, great people, prefer relationships that are solid than money. While people that are struggling with money, they prefer money over relationship. Based on this, I welcome you this day uh, to now stepping up. My name is still Sebastian Nwaneri, and um, I believe that the Lord Almighty will bless you all in the name of Jesus. I just want to like um, assure, reassure my viewers all over the globe that Family Line has been rebranded to Stepping Up, Stepping Up, and the name now, starting from next episode, will be Stepping Up. So we're going to be looking at the dynamics of relationship part two. The dynamics of relationship part two. Dynamics of relationship part two. You can't move further or greater than your level of relationship part time. Understanding is the advantage you have when it comes to relationship. Yes, let me quickly just mention a few things. I got two serious feedback from my viewers. In fact, it was, uh, let me use the word, it was a trending question, how pastor's, wife, pastor's wives has been crushed, let me use that word, by church members, how church members relegate, neglect, don't appreciate their pastor's wife. Um, and the second one, how church members have hijacked some ministry and have taken over some, uh, uh, some ministry. They are the ones that control the pastor, not the word of God, not the spirit of God, not the leading of the presence of God. So based on this, praying and looking how to go about it, because I can, it's not a, it's not a one thing teaching, you come and teach and go off. But I just feel that uh, by his grace, we're going to have what I call an executive training, one day executive training uh, for people, is both pastors, pastor's wife, for you to know how to handle this this skill when it comes to people relationship is a great challenge. And let me quickly just like balance everybody. We are having a day training on, uh, on, on developing productive what? Relationship, people relationship, knowing how to connect with relevant people, know how to lead from the middle, know how to now manage hurting people. Five, five courses in one day, um, the 24th of November, 24th of November, 8.30 in the morning, you come by 8 in the morning, we start teaching by 8.30 in the morning, and we finish by 4 o'clock that same day. Anybody, you can come in with the first flight and leave by the last flight. Five course content. How do you handle hurting people? Listen, hurting people hurt others. 90%, what me, 90% of people in the body of Christ, they are hurting. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 12, Proverbs chapter 13 verse 12, it says, hope defies, make the heart sick. A lot of people are sick others. in the body of Christ, and when they are bitter, they extend those bitterness to people around them. Many people are yet to come to experience the love of Christ. When you don't experience the love of Christ, you can't share it. Romans chapter 5, verse 5, it says, The love of the Holy Spirit, the love of Christ has been shed upon our heart through the Holy Spirit. We need to know how to show. Look, the, the, the church, if you check, church is, is, um, is love scars. There's so much judgmental condemnation, bitterness, and anger. And those things are coming out from, from some, some past hurt that are yet to be healed. So come that time, it's a paying in course. You're going to have a certificate of participation. Then you now have a testimonial, which you can present in your office for those of us that are working. It's exclusively for pastors, pastor's wife, business owners, school owners, 
Every one of us, we interact with people every day. So you need to know how to handle them. And as you do, God Almighty will bless you in the name of Jesus. Yes, let's go back to what we are talking about. There are dynamics. What we, what we mean by dynamics of relationship are there, are there are forces behind the behavioral pattern of every individual. The way we relate, the way we connect, the way we interact with one another. There are forces behind it that we can't. Handle. You are just speaking to somebody, the next moment he snaps. Why did he snap? You are speaking to somebody, the moment he just smiles. What are the underlying happenings? What are the, what are the uh, cause of that action or that reaction? So we are trying to like build it up in the last episode. I made you to understand that Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 is a relationship statement by God Almighty when he said it is not good for man to be alone, that I will make him what? A helper comparable to him. And I said, when we say comparable means that we meet his own need, that is suitable for him, adaptable for him, that is what? That is, is comparable, that is connecting to him. Now, I don't want to teach much about this and marriage, but when you study that Genesis chapter 2 verse 20, Genesis 2 18 said it's not good for man to be alone. But when you get to Genesis chapter 2 verse 20, he repeated the same statement. Because Adam gave name to all the cattle, all the animals, all the bears, and everything. Then the next one, next statement, that same verse 20, he said, but for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. That's why I was telling us that you get married from your circle of relationship. You get married from what? From your friends. You just don't see somebody from the blues and you pick up. If you are not a relational person or a friendly person, it will be difficult for you to get the right person to settle down with. Pastor, what are you saying? <clears throat> a lot of us are yet to come to this realization. The environment and the culture has choked this attitude. Pastor, what are you saying? When the opposite sex stays together for so long, meaning a brother and a sister, a male and a female, they relate, they discuss, they stay interacting for so long and staying together regularly, the environment, people will start insinuating things. They will start assuming, they will start gossiping, they will start accusation. They will, this accusation have made this, this kind of relationship that are platonic without any, without any intimacy to cut off because people don't want to get involved in the body of Christ. Check it. Two brothers, a, a brother and a sister moving together and they see them often, they are just discussing. They like sharing each other's company. People will insinuate that something is happening. And to make it more interesting, if they see them in a dark area, ah, people imagination go wide. Please spot your mind. Let us renew our mind. Because these are the things that is bringing in problem. Some of our parents are putting sisters under pressure. The moment a brother comes visiting, you say, is he the one? I, you don't want them to be friendly. You don't want them to be free. But check the scripture. Check the scripture. Check the scripture. Go home, study, open your Bible, Genesis chapter 2, from verse 18, verse 19, verse 20, verse 21. Verse 18 started with relationship, friendship. Verse 20 made us to understand that, yes, there was a need. It's not good for this man. Verse 21, God put the man into a deep sleep, took something out, a rib, out of the man. Then in verse 22, he produced the woman, which finally became the wife. What does that mean? I'm not teaching about marriage. I'm just trying to let you know the importance of friendship leading to what? To marriage. That's why I tell, I tell people it's not all friendship that ends up in marriage. It's not all relationship that ends up in marriage. There are platonic relationships. There are family relationships that, that spans for years 
People growing together in the same environment, growing together in the same peer group, growing together in the same department, growing together in the same class, growing together in the same, in the same department. It is highly impactful, interesting, but because of the environment, because of the culture, please, let's stop this. Let me balance it. I won't, I won't rule off the fact that there are some people that have what? That have, have taken advantage of such. But that does not mean that there are no healthy, healthy relationships as that. We can discuss. You can talk into the nights. Nice. What are you people talking? You are brainstorming. You are discussing. What about if the guy is, is the sister or the girl or the lady that is more intelligent in the class? And the brother does not know the subject. Because of this cliche that has brought a war, the brother will not, I don't, I don't want them to gossip about us. I don't want them to say about us. But you are depriving the intelligence. Let me say this. Let me say this. Every time you are in a relationship and there's a problem or the relationship is broken and the relationship uh, goes sour, there is a lesson of life you have learned. Checking on the brain. The larger portion of the brain is for social interaction. The larger portion of the brain. I'm not talking about brain now. I'm not labeling the brain. There are parts of brain. You have the part for speech. You have the part for thinking. You have the part for analysis. You have the part for processing. You have the part for sight. You have the part for everything. But largely said, according to scientific and statistics, largely said, the part of our brain that is bigger in size is the part of what? Relationship, social interaction. Because life is about interaction. Greatness is about interaction. Business is about interaction. Church growth is about interaction. Everything about life is about relationship. So you need to know how to meander, how to navigate, how to move through every part, every phase, every structure of what? The relationships. And let me tell you, parents, this is one of the best skills you are going to hand over to your children. If you don't hand over your, to your children how to be an uh, uh, effective and efficient relationship person, the person will not go far in the journey of life. Because employment is a relationship. You have workplace relationship. You have environmental relationship. You never can tell where they're going to be. When they say somebody's net worth, net worth, your net worth is a collection of your relationships. I'm sorry to say, poor people don't value relationship. Rich people value relationship. That's why I said something in my quote, in my intro this, this day. I said, wealthy people prefer productive relationship. Place relationship and money. A poor man will go for the money. A wealthy man will go for relationship. Because there is nobody that can explain the net worth, the totality, and the, and the value of one relationship. You, you can't predict it. Looking at somebody, you don't know the person, the person knows, because relationship is a sequence. That's why they said that you are four people away from greatness. You know somebody that knows somebody, that knows somebody that knows what? Greatness. So if you don't know how to connect to the first person close to you, you might not connect to greatness. So you need to come to that understanding. And we looked at something I heard, the benefit of, being, of not being alone. There are benefits accrued to it. That's why we looked at Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 to 12, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12, that says uh, that two, two are better than one. Two are better than one. Now, the next point is that they have greater reward for their labor. They have greater reward for their labor. That, that, that's why you check. Many of us, due to our attitude and environmental behavior, we have, we have, um, we have, Cage our children. We have caged the youth. We are not allowing them to express themselves. We have caged the youth. That's why the youth <laughs> by themselves have imploded into what is known as lesbianism and, 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 and you know the other one, and gay. Why? Because you are not bringing them. When you come together, you label them. And let me tell you, churches, let us stop singing, oh, single, single. Those are truths that are real that are coming in into the body of Christ. We need to talk about it. We need to educate it. We need to bring it to bear for people to know how to handle and how to maneuver. So there are benefits of you not being alone. 
a lot of people do. <laughs> because I just don't want to go into some intricacies areas. A lot of people are lonely. A lot. Look, let me tell you, being, being lonely does not mean you are alone. You can be in the midst of crowd of people, but yet you are alone. Let me say that again. You can be in the midst of crowd of people, you are, are you, are yet you are still alone. That's why I've told you in our book, Maximizing Your Life, page 87, chapter 11, we are talking about association. And I'm encouraging you, seriously, I'm encouraging you under God, anywhere you are in this continent, in this country, because it's a day, it's a day workshop for us to sit down, sit down. Because I had things that I was shocked. Pastor's wife crying. How church members have dealt with them. It's interaction. Judging pastor's wife, degrading them, insulting them, and the pastor that is the head doesn't know what is happening. I, sp I speak something. Too much, when you are focused, focus leads to blindness. When you are focused, it leads to blindness. It takes people that are close to you. That's what they call inner circle relationship. Your inner circle relationship must not be more than five people. Your wife or your spouse must be one of them. And you listen to what they are saying. If you have not gotten that or you have not listened to it, go to our YouTube page and listen to Attitude Towards Correction. Pastors, hear me clearly. You better learn and listen to your wife. Let me tell you the gospel truth, pastors out there. The people that will stay with you, irrespective of the church, is your family. Your wife and your children. You are, look, let me tell you. The bride of the church are the church members that you are following. They call you. <laughs> you will be shocked. That when your children misbehave, it is the same people you are spending all your life for that will be the one that will mock you, that will say she be they call themselves pastor. Can't you see their children? Let me tell you, pastors, you are running five, five services. What me? Five services, it is not compulsory, it is not documented in any part of the Bible that your wife must attend the whole five. Your wife attend one that is convenient for him. For her, one with the children. One. Pastor, why? She's a worker. Yes. Ensure that workers does not, they don't work in the whole five services. Hey, ah, I don't want to say what came to my mind. Where, how can you allow, they are young. Ensure, pastor, please, five services, increase the work strength. Let each worker maximum one service. One, one. So that, they work for one, they go home and rest and read what you have taught them. If they are married, I beg of you in the name of Jesus, let married women that have children as workers, let them do one service. The responsibility of your wife as a pastor is to minister to you. I am telling you as a practitioner. You have five services as a pastor. Reverend Samadhi, any of this time, does only one service, the one that he likes. You say, okay, fine, God is the one that gave me all the message. You preach the whole five as the senior pastor. That's your assignment. Your wife should do one so that your wife will have enough energy to prepare for you when you are back. Look, many pastors, we don't know. When you are battered and hitting by canceling prayer, Krebodo Soto, you can be a success to keep Members don't care that you are tired, though. They will still be coming. When you now get home, let your wife have energy to minister what? Life. And strength to you to give you good food, to help you, to nurse you. Don't you know that your wife nurses you? But when you do five service, your wife do five service, who will not who? God will give you wisdom. Pastor, my wife is called into ministry. You as the head use intelligence. There's something they call spiritual intelligence. Job 32.8, there's a spirit in man. The breath of God gives him what? Intelligence. Another translation says the breath of God gives him understanding. I am telling you, eh? I am. <laughs> Bishop Oedipo said, if you don't rest, you may rest in peace. The Lord will give understanding in the name of Jesus. Church member, wisdom should tell you, eh? You too should learn how to grow. Give respect to your pastor. Give respect to the wife. Give respect to the family. God Almighty, remember what happened to Miriam. I will not talk and say more than that, but above all, pastors, we need to learn the skill. Let me tell you the gospel truth because we are talking about dynamics of relationship. The most difficult people to handle are church members. I'm telling you as a practitioner. Number two, the most difficult people to handle are what? 
are, are volunteers. I've been with a foundation as an executive, uh, as a director for over 19 years. The most difficult people to handle are volunteers, church members, church workers, because you will have strategized and planned with them, they just disappear. What will you do? We have emergency. Will you kill them? No. Who did they call? You. <laughs> I'm telling you, but let me tell you. Let me tell you something. If you are out there, like a young man called me, ah, Shakaladoske. The day he called me, I was in a very good mood. He told me that, Pastor, what do I say about it? God Almighty is my witness. That he doesn't come to workers' meeting and he, and he travels, that his pastor does not ask after him. That is that not wickedness on the part of the pastor? I say very good. Question, have there been a time you were absent and the pastor called you that why were you absent? He said, yes. I said, because you have made it a habit. That's why the pastor decided to ignore you. True or false? <laughs> I say it's true. Now, if you were to be in the pastor's shoe, they have program and plan because church service is a teamwork. It takes what? It takes teamwork to make the dream work. Team, team. We are all teams. If one person is absent, it will bring problem in the service. It's just like a theater group. When one person is not handling his part well, it will affect everybody. First Corinthians chapter 12. The mouth, can you imagine how the body will feel like? The eyes say, I want to go to Ikeda. The legs say, I want to go to Yaba. <laughs> the hands say, I'm going to Yibo. The whole body is scattered. But we need to run through a system. You are not taking permission. You are just, the head of the department will be under pressure. Please, let us what? Let us care. Let us care. I've seen people, Christians, drive out, disobeying people, talking to people anyhow. Ah, let's have respect for one another. That will take me to, quickly, one thing I've, I've termed. Somebody asked, how are you going to be friendly? How are you going to be friendly? You need to learn how to be friendly. Seriously speaking, most of us Christians, we are not friendly. We are very antagonistic. We are very judgmental. We are very bitter and angry. Only very few. Very, very few. I'm telling you, because I have a, a statement for them. I say everybody behaves to me according to their level of knowledge and understanding per time. When they know better, they behave better. Whatever they do, just look at them. Just walk away. But let us learn. That is why many, past, uh, many Christians are struggling in the marketplace. Marketplace and church, there are two different sets, you know. You misbehave in the office, they go give you quick. You misbehave, they sack you. Look, the people think I am harsh. But what? There is what they call strictness in the marketplace. We are not in marketplace to go and do one, one, one. We are there to make profit. If the company is not making profit, where do you expect the owner of the organization to get money to pay you salary? The Bible made us to understand. Pro, uh, Solomon, with his intelligence, Proverbs 18.24. Proverbs 18.24. He said, a man who, who has friends must himself be friendly. So if you want to have friends, you must be friendly. It's not doing face like 12 o'clock. <laughs> but there is a friend who stick closer than a brother. That means there, there are an, an attitude, a character, a behavioral pattern a friend will display that you will move the level of that friendship from friendship to become what? To become a family. What are those? Where are they? You need to understand. Now, one of the ways, let me just run you through, how to connect to people. Let me say this. Before you can relate with people, you learn how to relate with yourself. Before you can relate with people, learn how to relate with yourself. Let me tell you, there was a time when people were talking about this color blocking. They, they, some people are still doing it. What is color blocking? <laughs> color blocking is you wearing different color. I can put it in the simple English. Color out. When I had that statement, when I understood the meaning, I went head on with our youth, our leader, I told them that anybody talking about color blocking is a problem from the mind. The person is not happy. How will you look like a masculine when you are not one because of fashion? That, is, that fashion, put me, is from the pit of hell. Because how do you look wearing purple, yellow, and you now dress, you, you, the, the ladies are doing it, you want to block, what are you blocking? What are you blocking? Pastor, what are you saying? Think, the day you are sad, you don't dress well. You don't care about the way you look. 
If you are emotionally battered, emotionally dealt with, you don't care the way you look. And how I got to know that some ladies or sisters, <laughs> young ladies, have started getting compliments from other, you know, the opposite sex. Oh, when a lady started, <laughs> when a lady started checking herself, <laughs> okay, my hair is my hair, okay, 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 yes, yes. Compliment have started. And let me tell you, it is not bad. Some of them, please hear me clearly. Husband, be balanced, be secured. When nobody pay your wife compliment, it's, to me, it's a problem. It means that you have failed as a husband. So you should have security. Some will say, no, 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 no. Mama Kechi, mm, stop calling her Mama Kechi. Have a pet name. I will tell you. <laughs> I will give you, I will give you an idea. Because those pet names brings both of you together. So I know when sisters that were not taking care of themselves started, start taking care of themselves. Uh -huh. And when I see sisters that don't care, they wear everything. <laughs> they don't know how to walk as ladies. Don't you know that ladies know how to walk? You walk on a straight line. Uh -huh. You can't walk. Some will say elephant walk is your problem. Cat, cat walk. Walk normal like a lady. Don't walk like a man. When you are not putting these details in place, there's something missing. We are talking about how to be friendly. How to be friendly. There is no harm. Please, ladies, it's not the way. The brother comes and says, your hair is looking nice. <laughs> yes, and so, thank you, thank you. No, 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 no. Accept the compliment. Thank you very much. God bless you. Meaning that somebody is watching your hair. And by the time both of them are in place, you are making yourself to be friendly. And when you make yourself to be friendly, anything can happen. Let me say this. I've said it on this program, and I'm saying it again. How do somebody marry the other person? Just a thought. When you pass, the thought drops. This is a wife material. The thought drops. So your behavior, your character, your attitude is like smoke. Nobody can cover it. So check the way you appear. Check your appearance. I have dropped my note because connecting with people is appearance. Connecting with people, making yourself friendly. I, I, I'm not going to talk about this, but, but, but don't you know that there are some colors that are awful to the side? Awful, awful. Colors that are awful, awful. When you appear in some color, either as a male or as a female, it repels people. At least I'm going to go on break now after the break. I'll just take one or two minutes, then we'll move ahead. I'll now open the line for your question or contribution. Remain blessed, don't change that, that I will be back. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, this is Pastor Inokadija Adeboye. I just want to tell all of you, my children, my friends, my well-wishers, that I have only one Facebook account. And so if, and in, in any case, if anybody ever tells you that I'm asking you to give an offering or make a contribution towards one thing or the other, please check with me. Don't let anybody defraud you. Don't let anybody take your money and use it to satisfy uh, the works of the devil. Please, just make an effort. Contact us at the headquarters here. You can always reach me through my uh, secretary, Pastor Long Nibe, or my personal assistant, Pastor Leki Adeboye. Please, let's, let's, let us defeat these workers of evil by making an extra effort. Before you release any fund at all towards anything they may say, I'm asking for, please check up. And the Almighty God will continue to bless you. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name.
Yeah, welcome back to Family Lem, uh, to Stepping Up. My name is Sebastian Wanneri, and we are looking at Dynamics of Relationship uh, Part 2. Yes, don't forget that we have, have a structured life. Get, get, get the uh, pack on attitude towards correction. That teaching is excellent, and the Lord Almighty will bless you. We have bearing spiritual fruit, bearing spiritual fruit. And don't forget about the one-day training, the one-day executive training on what? On people relationship. You need to acquire that skill. One day, November 24th, 8 in the morning till 4 in the evening is a payable training, and um, you, will be, uh, you will have certificate of participation and testimonial. And let me just tell you one or two courses that you're going to be seeing. You're going to learn the level of people relationship. There are levels. Which many of you might be in level one of the relationship. They have five or six of them. You have to understand self-management because you can't manage others until you are able to manage yourself. If you are bitter with yourself, you will express, you will sell that bitterness to others. And um, handling, knowing how to handle hurting people, how to move hurting people to what? To healing people. How to move hurting people to healing people. Don't forget, get maximizing your life. We are looking at chapter 11 when we talk about the connection between life and what? Association and relationship. Yes, before we went on break, I was talking about how to really, really connect with people. How to connect with people. I've given you the first one, which is what? Your appearance. Your ability to know people's name. I have to work on myself to know people's name. That's point number two. It's not too healthy as a leader for you to start saying, hey, excuse me, what's your name? It's embarrassing. When you mention people's name, it brings closeness to you. It, it, it shows worth. It shows value. Seriously, I won't forget the impact the day Reverend Sam Adeyemi Desta mentioned my name. I was like, what? Many years ago, maybe about 12, 13, 14 years ago, I was like, blood of God, what is this? He doesn't say, Uncle Seb, how are you? How are you doing? I was like, hey, so he knows my name. Say high five. Wow, I felt very happy. Everybody around was like, oh, he knows you. He knows your name. Ah, so, so, so it leaves those deposits of, of emotional substance in the heart and the mind of people. Number three, show and behave in a kind manner, pleasant way, because you value them. Let us be kind. Kindness is an attribute of God. It's, 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 it's a fruit of the spirit. Let's be pleasant. Let's, let's, let's talk to people freely. Number four, number four, let's help and assist others. Let me tell you something. Husband, that you, you don't know, that helping your wife. I wonder some husband, you see them going, they'll be, they be in front. They'll be marching as if they are soldier. Their wife will carry the child, carry the extra bag, carry, you know, women have extra bags. So, so, that's why they are very extra people. No, the, the, as they are carrying everything, the man will carry one. Carry one, carry one. That's why I'm telling pastors, please, you don't have a car. Please think about it. You don't have a car. You, the senior pastor, the shepherd in the house, the commander-in-chief of the forces of God, you leave home by 6 a.m., leaving your wife to come with the whole three children. Is it fair? It's not. If that were to be your sister, what would you do? Look, if the boy among them have bath that one, prepare him, tell him, let's go. No matter the age, he will be asking you questions. It's excitement. Take burdens of her. Let me tell you, many of you don't know that service is a love language. Service. Service. Helping out. Helping out. That's why women are protesting. They are carrying placards. And I'm speaking on their behalf this morning. Now, now, we need to understand, please, the love language of children. Parents, please understand. Love language. Connect with your children. The love language of children is spelled as T-I-M-E. They value T-I-M-E more than money and your gift. They want you to be around. Pray with them. Run around with them. I was shocked when a pastor's wife was telling me that the pastor, senior pastor, does not have time for the children. He wants to read. That's what I, want. I want to get revelation. I'm getting revelation. I'm getting revelation. After getting the revelation to revolutionize everywhere, what happened to your own children? Your children, they are gift from God to you. And what you do with those children, they are gift to humankind, to humanity. You can be the most anointed person but <laughs> can they remember the name of your children? Can I ask you one simple question, pastors out there? Who can tell me the name of the children of Moses? What about Joshua? 
Their father were great, but the greatness stayed with them. God will give us intelligence in the name of Jesus. So number the, the next one is treat people with care, attention, and value. See something important in them. Please, studio, let them put the, the studio number now. For you to be part of this uh, uh, program, you, you have to uh, 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 call in or you send your test message now. That's the studio number. Thank you. You call in and say, or send your test message. And to be part of it, please, your test message should not be a paragraph. It should just be a line or a sentence so that I can quickly go through it and able to comment on it. And please, where your questions or your call are true, just ask me straight and mute your TV set, and the Lord Almighty will help us in the name of Jesus. Please care. Care. People are looking for who to care for. There's something we did in our church as part of welcome, uh, a welcome package. And when people come new, we just recognize them before, we, before the service starts. We just sing a welcome song, welcoming everybody to church, appreciating them for coming for service. Then we now go around. Brothers, we hug brothers. Sisters, we hug sisters. A lady came after the service, told me that for the past six, seven years, nobody has hugged her. Yes, welcome to... Welcome to stepping up. Hello. Oh, just keep on trying. Try. Nobody has hugged her. Care. Show them. Show them you care for them. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Welcome to stepping up. What is your name? Where are you calling from, please? Please mute your TV set. Yes, please mute your TV set. What is your name? Where are you calling from, please? Please, when your calls are through, Walk away from the TV set or mute your TV set. Let us discuss with your phone. You can't be talking to me and be listening to yourself via your TV set. Welcome to family. <laughs> oh, the line is gone. So you need to learn how to care for people. Pay attention to them. Hello? Hello. Yes, uh, welcome to Stepping Up. What's your name? Where are you coming from, please? Oh, just keep on trying. And don't forget, you can still send us a test message. Yes. Hello? Hello, Hello yes. Uh, welcome to Stepping Up. What's your name? Where are you calling from, please? Oh, everything. The line will be through and everything will be okay. I know that the calls are much. Welcome to Stepping Up. Hello? Oh, just keep on trying, just keep on trying. Everybody wants to be part of the program. At the same time, everybody wants to be part of the program. Hello? Just keep on, just keep on. Send text message as your calls are not coming in. Hello? Hello, calling from Abakaliki. What is your name, sir? Yeah? What is your name? What is your name, sir? Chuku Emeka. So, what's your question or contribution, sir? Um, I want to ask the okay. possibility of allowing our youth to opposite sex to work together and, uh, you know, without monitoring them. And we believe that there's nothing going wrong among them. Even though we are believers, we believe, but we know that good and yam don't stay together. Well, what we know. well, I thank God that the people you are saying, they are not good. Neither are they young. Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, Train up a child the way it should go. And when it grows up, it will not depart. For you to be afraid that your daughter staying around a boy or boys, they will do something to her, is a proof you have not. You, anybody that have that mindset, is a proof you have not succeeded in parenting. You have not succeeded in parenting. Because let me tell you the truth, you should train these children not to stay but to go. One day they will leave you. Monitoring them 27-7, it shows that you are insecure. You are not confident about them, and it's a wrong signal to them. And, and that is why there's, 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 there's a lot of teenage pregnancy from the church. Because, look, there's something I tell you. There are various kinds of, uh, of wisdom. Please, uh, let me explain this. There are various kinds of wisdom. There's something they call street wisdom. Street, street wisdom. Proverbs chapter 8. It said the wisdom is shouted on the street. When we teach our children wisdom, there's a difference between wisdom in the house, how to interact with people in the house. There's a, there's a difference between wisdom in the church. There's a difference between wisdom in school, wisdom at workplace. There's a difference between wisdom in the street. I, was, I heard about a girl. They, he, went, he went to the cinema with the dad. The, the girl was in front. The dad was behind. Because the dad has schooled the girl well. There's a guy in front. 
that was using sense to be pushing back and be using his back to touch the girl upper part. You know what I mean by upper part. The girl replied, excuse me, personal space, personal space, personal space. The guy was pretending, the father from behind tapped. Don't you understand English? He said, I'm very sorry. From that time, the guy gave, see, see it's, it's you preparing. Let me tell you, why do you think God said through Jesus that I am sending you as a sheep in the midst of wolves? I did that for you to know that we need to get ourselves prepared. That's why this training, many of us have not read book on relationship. You think only relationship is marriage. There are more to relationship than marriage. You need to teach them. Your daughter can see from afar that this person is a wolf. He runs away and knows how to handle them. Hello? Yes, welcome to uh, Stepping Up. What's your day? Where are you calling from, please? Hello, yes. Hello, hello, please. I have not seen the message. I've not seen the message. Maybe it's network. Okay, now you are on. What is your question or contribution, ma'am? It's always what? Bitter and bitter. Yes. Now, it's because you are yet to understand why is he bitter? Why is he beaten? He's beaten for you to help him. Now, women have the power of words. You have verbal strength. You need that verbal strength to do what? To motivate him. To encourage him. He's, he's beaten... He's bitter because he has gotten some funny experience. Hello, ma, are you listening, ma? Hello, ma, are you listening? <laughs> listen, he, she asked a question and she's distracted. But listen, your husband, you have identified two good things. Your husband is bitter. Why is he bitter? Things are not working the way it should work. A lot of men are frustrated. A medical doctor told me that men between the age of 34 and 46, they, 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 they are having, uh, they're having strokes and hypertensive cases. Why? Because there's so much pressure on men. They want to deliver. We thank God that their economy is, is interesting. So there are pressure. When your husband goes to the marketplace, he's defeated, he's battered and beaten. When he comes to the home, there's a difference between the house and the home. Where he's supposed to be healed. And you too, you add your own joint. <laughs> it, it's, it's funny. Pastor, I have done everything. You have not done everything. Ask him prayerfully. Number two, you can intercede for him. Number three, show him love. Show him care. Marketplace is not where they show people love. Don't divorce him. Oh God will give you intelligence and understanding in the name of Jesus. Yeah, welcome to Stepping Up. Hello? Hello? Just, I know that the, the, the line is down. There is no text message yet. No test message. Let's just keep on trying. And the Lord Almighty will grant us grace and intelligence in the name of Jesus. Okay. Yes. Welcome to Stepping Up. What's your name? Where are you calling from, please? Hello. Hello, yes, I can hear you. Welcome to... Um, what is your name? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Okay, what is the name, sir? Okay. Okay. If, if, uh, a, 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 if a man get attached to a lady, and during the course of being together, they misunderstand themselves, how would they get back to the normal track in order for them to? Let to me them? let me understand what you mean by a man attached to a lady. Are they married or they are in courtship or? Yeah. Fine, fine, fine. I assume that both of you are in courtship. Let me tell you, misunderstanding, as the word is, is that you, misunderstanding is made up of two words, miss and understanding, meaning that you refuse to see what the other person is saying. So you calm down. Why both of you are arguing or having misunderstanding is because you are seeing two different things. Let me tell you, this is my hand together. This is blue, this is red. She is from this side and talking about blue. You are from here saying that this, this hand is red. Now, for both of you to come together, it's not quarrel. You need to use word to explain, bring the person. 
One, before you can reply, you need to understand what the other person is saying. From that point, you explain what you are saying. Look, this happens more where you have intelligent individuals coming together in relationship. This person is saying no, keep calm down. That's why I'm saying that listen to our teaching on attitude towards correction. You don't get angry because when you are angry, when you are bitter, you will hear well, you will see well, you will understand what your partner is saying. So you need to come to that understanding that both of you are what? You might be saying the same thing but different uh, semantics language. Welcome to Family Line. Hello? Hello. Yes, uh, welcome to Step Below. What's your name? Where are you calling from, please? I'm coming from Yola, Adamawa. What is the name, sir? Tifanus. Okay, so what's your question or contribution, sir? My question is that is it wrong for a teenager to start a relationship? What teenager? Uh, to start a relationship is it on the age of teenager? What define the relationship? Let's be sure. What do you mean by relationship? Explain, explain, explain what you mean friendship. Between boyfriend and, and girlfriend. Look, let us be sure, because that boyfriend and girlfriend is, cover, is covering things. If they are platonic friends, oh, she's, he's my classmate, she is my classmate, he came to collect assignment, they gave us assignment, we want to do the assignment together, you don't leave them because they are teenagers, you don't leave them to go away, they stay where you can see and see what they are doing. They don't go to their room, they, sit, they, stay, they stay where at the city room or at the garden where everybody can see them as long as they are talking about books. But when it goes beyond that, teenagers should be thinking about what? The future. Thinking about going to school. And that's why I tell women, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say this. It's harsh, but it's the truth. Women are the receiving end. It depends on what they are, what they are receiving. They, they are the receiving end. When a lady or a teenager is impregnated, the guy goes to school, the lady is the one that stayed around to start nothing. And problem comes upon her. So wisdom tell you as a parent, let me tell you, parents, you are the first word. You are the chief security officer of your home. Husbands, men, you teach your daughter. Teach them the gimmicks. When they start, let them know there are red buttons, red area. The discussion, the touch tree must not cross this boundary. Anybody that moves hand towards this area, equal to her, you, you bounce the hand back. You bounce the hand back, and that is how to prepare your child to face the environment and the society. There is nothing like a boyfriend and girlfriend. Read your book. Mm. Hello. Hello, yes. Welcome to family. <laughs> Welcome to Step It Up. What's your name? Where are you calling from, please? My name is Ike. I'm calling from Joss. Okay, my caller from Joss. What's the question or contribution, sir? Um, I have a girl I want to get married to. Okay. Uh, I have a girl I want to get married to. And I just think she likes a lot. Please mute your TV set. Mute your TV set so you can hear me clearly. Mute your TV set. Okay, okay, sir. Yeah, yes, you have a girl you want to marry. I have a girl I want to get married to, but oh. I just find out she likes a lot. And each time she likes, I, I, I catch her. And she will say she will not do it again. And she goes back to do it again. So, so I don't know what to do. I'm just so, I'm trying to just let it go. So what's, what's your question now? And she doesn't want to change. And each time she asks me for money, she doesn't want she needs money for a particular thing. Like she needs like 10000 uh, and I took I don't have 10,000, I'll take 5,000 and do what she wants to do. I find that anytime I go to her phone, I find that she has sent that same text message to like other three or four people that she wants money and she needs money to do that same thing. So, so no, I don't know if I should go on with the whole thing or I should just drop it. Okay, what do you think you should do? You are a man, you should, you should be able to know some decision. What do you think you should do? I, 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 am, I am tired, I think I just want to let her go because the light is getting too much. Okay, okay. Uh, may God not make you to be a, a liar catcher in Jesus' name. Wisdom tell you just, just, just severe the relationship. She's, she's still your friend. She's still your friend. You see, greet, hello, hello, hi, hi. That, that is my brother. Listen to me clearly. Calm down, calm down. I understand what you're saying. She's your friend, but both of you are not going to marry. When you see her, you greet her. Don't when you see her pass, don't be bitter or angry with her. When you see her, you thank you thank her. Uh, Thanksgiving Sunday, go and thank God very well for God to give you understanding for you to be able to know now that one she 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 likes a lot. Two, she loves money. Three, she can go to any land to get money from anywhere. That those are powerful revelation from heaven for you to have recognized it. Thank God when you see her, thank her, thank her very much. Thank. Are you with me? 
Don't be angry. And those of you out there, it's not a gender thing, you know. It happens to sisters. It happens to brothers. God will give us intelligence in the name of Jesus. Because that's a very beautiful revelation. A lot of people don't see it. They will come and tell me that, Pastor, it's unforeseen circumstances. I tell them it's a lie. It's a refuse to see circumstances. You refuse to see it. Yes, welcome to Stepping Up. Hello? Hello, welcome to Stepping Up. Please mute your TV set. Let's, yes, hello? Just where your calls are through. Well, your calls are true. Yes, hello? Hello? Yes, what's your name? Where are you calling from, please? This is Kufi Godwin, calling from Lagos. Okay, yes, which part of Lagos? Mute your TV set or walk away from your TV set. Mute, mute your TV set. Mute, mute your TV set or walk away from your TV set. I'm doing that, I'm doing that, sir. Okay, so what is your question or contribution? You see, this is a very beautiful question. In fact, for you to have the mind, church mind, to call and ask this question, I clap for you. God bless you, my brother. What I'm going to tell you to do is this. Please, don't let your ego get into the way. You want to learn. As you want to learn, allow your wife to teach you. Tell her that you want to speak, you want to learn, you want to... See, allow her to teach you. Whatever. Let her teach you how to write. Let her teach you how to speak. Listen to news more often. Try to read newspaper. She might even tell you, look, I'm telling you the gospel truth. She might, she might even tell you that, look, I'm going to get you brighter grammar. Brighter grammar is what some of these people in uh, uh, kindergarten, primary one, primary two, they read. When you understand the structure formation of English, you know how to speak it well. And just allow her to help you. And go to school, do the assignment, and start learning. Look, let me tell you, in the next five years, you will understand it and you will now do what? Because you have cultivated the habit of learning, you might not supersede her. You might supersede her in intelligence. Thank you very much, my caller. God bless you. And I join my faith with your own. You will achieve your dream and desire in Jesus' name. Yes, I'm just going to take one more call and we are off for this. Don't forget, on the 24th of November, there's a one-day executive training for what? Skill development in relationship. Yes. Hello? Yeah, welcome to Stepping Up. What's your name? Where are you calling from, please? Hello. Mute your TV set so that you can hear me. Hello? Hello? Yes, what's your name? Where are you calling from, please? Uh, I'm calling from Bini. Okay, what is the name? Rita. Okay, Rita, please mute your TV set or walk away from your TV set. What's your question or contribution, Rita? Rita, mute your TV set so you can hear me clearly. Stop listening to your TV set. Listen to your phone. Rita. Okay. I want to ask a question. I, I'm coming from Vinny. Go ahead. Okay. I, I'm just new in Vinny. Okay. So, and I, I got married to my husband. So, I want to know. <laughs> you want to know, Rita, my time is going. We want to know. You are laughing. Le Rita, Rita, you, my number is on the screen. That's my number and my email address. You can call me. My time is up, and they are telling me to run off. That's my number. That's uh, my email address. Call me, and let's discuss. Where you call, I'm not picking. Just send me a text message. Thank you very much. Uh, today, we have looked at, uh, at relationship dynamics, part two. Don't forget about what? The one-day training to develop you and equip you on how to navigate life via knowing how to handle relationships. Till I come your way next time, my name is still Sebastian Wan, signing out for today's program. Remain blessed, remain blissful, and God bless you.